so many places in scripture command us to be holy, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. be perfect. And so, okay, uh, I want to obey, so I'm going to try to be holy and be perfect without the understanding of of how to, like we've discussed in the last mm-hmm. podcast, you know. Welcome everyone to podcast number 177, Renew Your Mind. With us today, we have Senior Pastor Paul Gruenberg, and we have Associate Pastor Jeremy Teru. We have Retired Pastor Barry Sweet, and we have our Youth and Family and Praise Leader Director, Jordan Kettlewell, and myself, Dana Hall, as the moderator. And the last couple of uh, podcasts, the series is on holiness. And today, we'd like to start off with a, a pretty bold question. Are there any risks or even any dangers with um, that we should look out for when we're attempting to achieve holiness? Mm. So I'll let you guys when, jump in. One I think, just as a transition from our previous podcast, is uh, trying to be holy ourselves rather than relying mm-hmm. on the grace and power of God to do that work in us because we're going to fall flat and not achieve yeah. it. And yeah. it's so easy to do. I mean, I, I would say a, a, f- a flat answer, which of course will require a lot of discussion, but a flat answer is are there dangers to holiness as in actual holiness, God's holiness? No. No. Yeah. No. Are there dangers to our holiness and our, our attempts to be holy? So many. There we go. I mean, there's, yeah. there's yeah, so many. And a we better can go, way to frame it up. Yeah. We can go so wrong in so many ways. And it's so easy to do without even realizing that you're doing it. Um, and I it, like what Jeremy said about when we try to do it on our own, because I think we're just, it's drilled into our heads to do things on our own. So mm-hmm. we, you know, <laughs> we're at risk more than we want to be, I think. Well, and I think there's there's also, you know, an aspect in that of of just misunderstanding Scripture, too, because, mm. you know, so many places in Scripture command us to be holy. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. be perfect. And so, okay, uh, I want to obey. So I'm going to try to be holy and be perfect without the understanding of of how to, like we've discussed in the last mm-hmm. podcast, you know, mm-hmm. of uh, the fact that it's it's really not us. It's it's the grace of God. It's the Holy Spirit working through us. That's the only holiness. Mm. Us on our own, we're a mess. Right. You know? And when we think that we've arrived and we've become more holy or holy, it's when we've departed from holiness actually Mm -hmm. Um, because it's centered in us and what we're doing and what we think Um, it's all about Barry and where, you know, Barry's arrived and look at me rather than look at God. Right. When we depart from focus, when we go to looking at ourselves rather than focusing people on God and past ourselves to God, that's we've left holiness Mm -hmm. completely. And and we've, we've also left uh, the, the possibility of growth spiritually. I mean, ourselves, mm-hmm. if we get to that point. Right. And I compare that to, um, you know, in my, in my prior career in law enforcement, I've met so many officers uh, that had been, you know, working for 15, 20 years, 20 plus years and a training would come up um, and they'd say, I've been doing this so long. I don't need, I don't need that training. And I, and I remember mm-hmm. even since I was a rookie officer, I thought to myself, if I ever get to the point where I say, I don't need that training, um, I need to just hang up my badge and gun. Because you're no longer teachable. Right. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and I feel like I know everything and therefore I can't learn anything else. Mm-hmm. I feel so, like I know everything. Uh, I would call that the pharisaical stance. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The Pharisees were the example of those who were to be holy, but they were anything but holy and had really come down to a place where it was about power, prestige, uh, about how others saw you. And that cannot be that. That's that's those fleeting thoughts that the devil wants to put in on you, and you just got to say, "No, it's not about me." Mm-hmm. And uh, the Pharisees are the example, and Jesus uses them when he talks mm-hmm. about the Pharisee who goes out on the street corner and says, "God, look at me, a sinner," blah blah blah, in front of everyone. And he says, "You though, you go to your closet." close the door and pray to your heavenly father who hears you and knows what you need. And in that he, he's talking about humility. That's mm-hmm. if you don't have a humble spirit, then if you think you're getting to that place of holiness, you're, you're probably looking more like a Pharisee 
in the eyes of others. I think humility, humility has to be um, almost the key because Jesus, what's it say? He humbled himself and took mm-hmm. on uh, flesh and became a man. Mm-hmm. Jesus didn't have to do that, but he did it for our sake. And maybe that's another aspect of holiness is we're doing it not for ourselves. We are the recipient of it, but we're doing it so that others might see Christ. You know, there's that phrase, holier than thou, is, mm-hmm. is I think that's one we're no longer useful on some right. levels. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a situation in one of my churches, it saddens me to this day just to think about it. There was a person that was coming in that was needy, and um, in that church, we had voucher system throughout the town. All the churches did a voucher system, and they'd go to a central place and get the help they need. So I gave this person a voucher, and I got ripped up and down, back and forth from one of my congregation members when they left, saying they didn't need anything. Look at their brand new tennis shoes they're wearing. Well, little did they know that those those were also a gift from someone else. This was a woman who was living on the streets, who was really trying to put her life back together, who was really focused on trying to be faithful and, and put God back into her life. And she was really moving in some good direction. And to have a sister in the faith. Um, a more mature. Supposedly. <laughs> yeah. Um, basically rip her down and, and question all her motives. Just tore a, my heart apart yeah. is that how could one of my people, I'm, what am I doing wrong as a pastor, mm. that they're in that place and that level of judgment mm-hmm. and anger. Mm. And I think the key is humbleness and recognizing that we're a fellow sinner along the path of life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're yeah. saved by grace and um, we should be grateful and it's out of gratitude that we do these things and we give and we share and that's where holiness comes from huh. and, and shows itself. Mm-hmm. And it departs when we become judgmental and we, when we become um, Lord over. And that's where the Pharisees. Were. Well, and, and how do we get there? I mean, I'm just, this is fascinating because uh, the thought in my mind is, is that the, there's the person who's staring down the end of their nose at you as though you are not good enough or right. you're not doing it right. And in thinking of that, if we don't have a sense of humility, then we will naturally gravitate mm. to looking at others and saying, you know, God, I'm better than them. Mm-hmm. Right. And as soon as you, as soon as that thought comes in, you better throw it down at Amen. the foot of the cross, that is a resist get the me devil. Satan moment. Mm. It is oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and it's interesting because when I was when I thought about us talking about a holier than thou attitude, I was thinking of a person that was like that day in and day out, not moments of time. Mm-hmm. I mean, every one of us has a moment where we look down at somebody. Mm-hmm. Right. It mm-hmm. may be in our head and not come out in words, but you know, and it's that's, a. It's when we thought. feel superior yeah. to anyone, right? And I, I think we're, we're in trouble. Judging, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, we're chatting about this before we started recording. Um, one of the ways that that manifests that holier than thou, or that being holy in your own eyes, mm-hmm. and kind of thinking you're you're in another echelon, and um, is that uh, there can be a tendency to to no longer reach into the lives of those in need, mm-hmm. the lives of the lost, the people with messy lives. Mm-hmm. and I don't want to stain myself. Right. So you're no longer ministering to Amen. the right. people that Jesus came to save. He came to seek and save the lost. Um, so that's a real danger. And, and you just see the complete opposite in the life of Jesus. I mean, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus laid his hands on the leper who no one was supposed to touch to heal him. He partied with the... Uh, Yes, uh, the, tax the tax and collectors. And he was sinners. born in a barn, for goodness sake. He was born in yeah. a barn. Jesus <laughs> spoke to yeah. the woman who one was a Samaritan, two was a woman, and three had a very messy life to offer her living water of yeah. salvation. A Samaritan woman, yeah. I mean, Jesus went right into the mess. Yeah. He was perfectly holy too, but yeah. that his holiness didn't keep him keep away him. from those who didn't know the Lord and had a so, messy life. So when we get into that place where we don't want to get dirty, where right. we don't want to engage yeah. because we might get dirty, part of it is is we forget we 
even in our supposedly cleaned up lives, it's still pretty messy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, that, that we at some point came from that, if we are saved. Yeah, if we are yeah. saved, but there's still mess in our lives. Oh, absolutely. We, I don't know anybody that lives a perfect existence doesn't and has a perfect family life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's where I that's where I have I struggle with like Jeremy, you mentioned the upper echelon of Christianity. And you know, we as just as human beings, we categorize things and we level things and you know, mm-hmm. more this or more that. First of all, everybody's relationship with Christ is unique and and different. Mm-hmm. And you can you can measure, you know, sure scriptural knowledge or you know time as a Christian, you know how long you've been a Christian, or you know uh, any number of tangible things that you can you re- really can quantify to try to create a tier system mm. in mm-hmm. Christianity, and we do that in our minds, and it, it's horrible because we then we then we start placing ourselves somewhere in that but just like you're saying Barry we've all got something absolutely so you know there's we're all a mess somewhere along the way I mean hopefully less, even as saved Christians yeah hopefully less a mess saved Christians today yeah. than I was yesterday hopefully yeah. much less a mess now than I was right. before I was saved but yes but we're still all a mess in some way or another so just because I might be on if we're making tears, I mean, I'm on this echelon here, you know, on this other aspect of my life, I might be down here. Mm-hmm. So we can't, if we don't have that, that scope of pastor Paul, like you were saying, like the, just humility in that and understanding that not only, you know, I'm looking at this from the, 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 the other perspective, not only will we end up in an area where we don't want to get our hands dirty and we don't want to get in that, the, the dredges of society. Right. right? Um, because it would make us look bad to be associating. The people in that position don't want to be ministered to by you at that point Mm -hmm. either. You're not going Mm -hmm. to reach them. Mm -hmm. And so now you've created a a, a mutual wall because, you know, and I know this from, from also from personal experience, because I was, I'm not a cradle to grave Christian, right? I wasn't, I wasn't raised in a, a church environment my whole childhood. And I met a ton of people that I just like, I don't, you know, they were maybe trying to witness to me, trying to minister mm-hmm. to me, but they're the the approach and the condemnation and the uh, just just so just so upright and you want and, to be like me and yeah, yeah. And, and like this this <laughs> this mask of perfection. Yeah. I was like, I don't I don't even want to. Yeah, I, I don't want to hear from. Well, I don't want to be like you. Well, and it doesn't you know? feel real, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. When we look at uh, biblically, we look in at Paul or Peter. Uh, they've messed up. Oh, my big time. And Paul, in one of his last letters, actually, it's Roman, so it's his declarative statement on Christianity, says in Romans 7, 18, and 19, mm-hmm. for I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. And so he confesses this guy who is the, creme de la creme, uh, confesses, look at, I'm not doing what I want to do. And the things I don't want to do, I do. And so if Paul's got an issue with that, then probably most everyone does. Yeah. Well, I let's just say everyone does. Yes. And, um, and to get past that, to get past that is to be honest uh, again, humility and to recognize that we're all walking in the same world and we all if we're truly uh seeking christ with all of our heart soul mind and strength then there is nobody that's unworthy if i can become worthy in christ then there is nobody who's unworthy Mm -hmm. and and so when we think of the there's another danger uh that i i wrote down not look therefore be acceptable to others so once once we enter into this holiness, this life of holiness, uh, we're gonna we're gonna create some friction with some other people mm. uh, who think they're holy, but they're not really holy, and it's gonna it's it's gonna create some. Um, I guess friction is the right word. So there were that construction guy I talked about last podcast. He was a guy who could create friction. Uh, because he was so heavenly minded, um, mm-hmm. there was a a freighter captain on the Great Lakes whom I talked with, who had had an accident and and uh, ended up having to leave that 
Uh, I think it was a brain injury. Uh, but he could quote scripture better than anyone I, I can ever remember. I mean, it was almost um, not a constant flow, but everything was backed up with scripture. And uh, so he could create friction with people. Um, but he also challenged me just by his presence mm. to know scripture better, you know. So we can either, we'll either create an atmosphere where people will want to join us in this adventure we call life into holiness, or we're going to create others who are going to go, man, who did they think they are? Right. Mm-hmm. And um, it creates a, did you see what they did? you know, type of thing. And and so there will be friction against the world. Again, do not conform to the pattern of this world. So the pattern of the world is going to come against what you're doing if you're trying to be uh, like Jesus uh, under the power of the influence. And so it's, it's just a, uh, you have, I think for me, um, you have to be single-minded. You have to surround yourself with other other Christians who are seeking, that's where you find some energy. Um, There's a friend of mine um, early on in my walk, and uh, we were both memorizing scripture, and and we would get together weekly, and we talk scripture, and he would tell me how he's doing something. And I'm like, well, if he can do it, I can do it, <laughs> right? And it's just as far as moving toward Christ, as far as allowing the Holy Spirit to work, and it's that iron sharpening iron. Yeah, that's a spurring mm-hmm. one another on. Sure, for love and sure. good deeds. Yeah, so. right. I think yeah. one of the keys for me is how are we loving other people? How, are we, how do we look at them? How do we perceive them? How do we treat them? Um, and, and, and trying to do it from the perspective of how does God look at people? Mm-hmm. He looks at them with love. Right. Even if they're as far from him as they can be, if they're Osama bin Laden or Hitler or, or whomever, God loved them. Mm-hmm. Didn't like what they did, but he loved them. And they mm-hmm. were redeemable. You know, they were able to be redeemed. Mm-hmm. If they're able to be redeemed, we all are. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think we treat it's how we treat people that shows whether holiness is at work in our life or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and if Jesus could kneel at the feet of his creation and wash their feet, mm-hmm. and he calls us to do the exact same thing, mm-hmm. is there's nobody that isn't worthy of having their feet washed mm. and being loved on. And, speaking and if we of can't getting do your that, hands dirty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if we can't do that, that's the danger of holiness. Mm. Right. Now, I'm going to check us here to, for a moment. Um, we get people coming into the church who, for lack of better words, abuse the system. Mm-hmm. We've got a discretionary fund that will help people. And yet there are people that will... Um, just lean into that. And uh, what did one other pastor say to me? If you if you give to somebody too much, then word will get around, and you'll get a ton of phone calls because you're helping people. Terrible thing. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the pearl clutching. Yeah. <laughs> so, what a s- terrible reputation. <laughs> sometimes, though, if you're going to help somebody get better, you have to say no. True. And that's on an individual basis. Mm-hmm. Right. But you don't just send them out the door and say, I'm not going to help you. Right. As you try and provide them a different kind of help. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you try and sit down and talk with them and figure out what's going on in their life and why are they repeat? Mm-hmm. You know, why are they still coming? Because I had always have had regulars. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I can, as a pastor, catch to the pers- perspective. Yeah, sometimes you do more damage than good by continually giving to them. But sometimes is it's between them and God and what they do with what I give them. Um, and it's not my job to judge them. But at the same time, if I'm not helping them, I need to figure that to out. The next step forward, yeah. And so how do I help them begin to move in some new areas? If they're continually in this same place, I'm not helping them. Yeah, help them and, find freedom from whatever they're right. bound in. Now, yeah. sometimes they're just not willing to go there, and that's on them. Right. But... Um, you can pray for them. You can try and send them to someone who can help them with budgeting or can, mm-hmm. you know, do some other things. But just sending them out the door and saying, I won't help you, isn't the answer, I don't think. Well, yeah, because that goes back to, to treating 
to treating those people as though they're not, they don't deserve to be in the church. Exactly. They don't deserve to be in that building. They don't deserve to, to receive Mm -hmm. our great and holy love. Right. Right. We don't want to, Mm -hmm. we we don't want to, we don't want to treat anyone like that. Right. So, yeah, I mean, there's sometimes you got to find creative different ways. It might not be, okay, I'm just giving you X amount of dollars every week. You know, all right, this is obviously something you're using and it's not help right now when when you do need some. Mm -hmm. Come in, talk to me, let me come to your home. That's that's getting down and washing the feet. Right. And it's, I was thinking that's getting, it is, but it's hard work, you know, when you have 47,000 other responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, but who else is going to do it? You Mm -hmm. obviously they were placed in your path for a reason. Um, and, Maybe we are the ones that have to break out of our routine for that day and dig, yeah. dive deeply into their mess to try and help them. Now, they have to be willing to receive it, but we have to be willing to dive deep. Mm-hmm. It was interesting. A uh, person we've helped a couple of times came back and asked uh, if we could give them some gas. And so we gave him a $10 gift card and... Uh, he looked at it and said, only $10? And um, I wasn't there. Uh, our administrative assistant did it. And she told me later, and he's like, I deserve better than this. Mm. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, oh my gosh. It just, it's one of those moments where I think how Jesus has looked at us time and time again, and we say, is this all that I get? And Jesus is like, oh, my goodness. (laughs) Get out of yourself. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, I think um, we're running out of time, so I will wrap us up. (laughs) Somebody better. (laughs) Yeah, somebody better. Um, So thank you for joining us today. We come to you from the Gaylord Methodist Church, uh, now a global Methodist church affiliated with. And we have uh, two services on Sunday. We have a traditional at 9 a.m. and a contemporary at 1045 a.m. We'd love to have you join us. Um, If you can't come in person, though, you can join us on Facebook Live or YouTube. And if you have any questions or want any other information, Google us. um, Just Google our name or you can call the office uh, 989-732-5380. Couple reminders, we do have a Super Bowl chili cook-off on February the 11th, and we'd love to have you join us for that. And um, again, if you have any questions, let us know. Thanks, everybody, for joining us.